this isn't the Wall Street Journal. The headline is, um, this is from late last week. The headline is Disney Plus, HBO Max, and other streamers get waves of subscribers from must-see content, but keeping them around is hard. Um, and basically, the Wall Street Journal um, got a hold of some um, cancellation trend data from a bunch from a company called it's a data analytics company called Antenna, and and uh, this company tracks signups and cancellations across the country. You know, for these big streaming video giants like Netflix, Disney Plus, we got HBO Max and Apple TV. Um, and what's cool in the data recently is that what they're seeing is um, you can always see a big spike in user acquisitions around the time of a popular release. And some of the some of the big ones that stood out recently was um, when Disney released uh, the musical Hamilton. This was in uh, 2020 when uh, kind of early on in their service um, or when Apple TV released the movie Greyhound, which stars Tom Hanks. Um, and you, you'll see a huge spike in people signing up around that time. But what the article talks about is often many of those subscribers end up canceling in the next few months or in that month after the after the month after they're done watching whatever it is brought them to the service after they're done binge watching, you know, whatever show it was. Um, so this is this is interesting. And I saw this as kind of a um, maybe a, a problem for a lot of companies um, in this space, especially ones that have smaller content catalogs or smaller budgets. Um, basically, um, you need a steady stream of shows and movies kind of coming out every month like dozens of them to keep people engaged in your service and it also it takes time to kind of ramp up that kind of production ability um as we've seen you know netflix has been working on that for over a decade and they still have uh, struggles um i don't think um i took a look at you know netflix reported earnings um about two weeks ago and they surprised a lot of people with their lower um well actually their engagement was good and their um cancellations were good but their new signups were were trending lower than they did in the pre-pandemic days. So, and management was kind of confused about that. They they didn't offer, you know, they, they were surprised. I guess the idea was that the pandemic got us all interested in digital content, and then there might be a little lull afterwards when we go outside and see the real world for a while, and then but then things will get back to normal like it was in 2019. Uh, but that's not happening so far in Netflix, and maybe this is part of it. Um, you know, uh, especially because Q4 was such a huge quarter for them in terms of releases uh you know squid squid game was so big and they had you know a lot of their content spending from the pr earlier part of the year got pushed to the late part and they still you know just barely kind of beat their barely met their expectations so maybe that's one reason you know why i guess people are maybe looking at content a little differently digital content this right now i don't know i mean maybe you guys have have a theory about this but maybe there's too little like quality content on these platforms or maybe there's too much because you know all these companies have just just flooded the market with so many so many good you know shows and movies that that they're coming a little bit less valuable to people. So, um, you know, maybe people are getting bored with the streaming choices out there. What do you, what do you guys thought, you guys think about your own uh, streaming habits lately? Um, yeah, I can I can weigh in. I thought this was really really interesting. I mean. Gosh, I have several different streaming services that I've um, subscribed to for a while. Uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and HBO Max. So kind of like, you know, the big, <laughs> the big three. I wonder if some of this drop off is kind of like what you were saying, like maybe people utilize that free trial period, perhaps, although I don't know if it's always a month, maybe sometimes it is, um, to kind of view something they really want to see like a, a movie or a show and they binge watch it and then they're done. Um, I don't think it's a shortage of content. That's the issue. I mean, there is so much content out there. Um, I think often it sort of gets to the point for people where maybe you've seen what you want to see on that platform and you just don't need all three subscriptions. You know, maybe you are watching more of one versus the other. Um, I too was surprised by Netflix's, you know, most recent report, which I do think investors overreacted to a little bit. Uh, but I do also think that um, this is something that's not, you know, new to the discussion. We've talked about this before, but Netflix has maybe exhausted a lot of its ability to grow um, in North America. And there's obviously a lot of global opportunities for expansion as well, but it is definitely a challenge. Um, I think just the fact that there is so much content out there that's constantly competing for viewers attention and that there are so many different companies within the space you know besides these big players you also have like smaller ones like um, peacock tv is one and and there's a bunch of like smaller ones so i i just tend to think it's an excess and it's just going to be increasingly difficult it doesn't mean these companies can't win 
Um, but who knows, maybe we'll see some of them going in the metaverse to try to, <laughs> to draw in new viewers because I don't know what the solution is, um, but I, I definitely don't think it's a shortage of content. Thank you.